In this video, we are going to learn uh, how to solve nonlinear simultaneous equations. Now, that sounds scary, but we've already learned how to solve simultaneous equations. But what they should be really be called is linear simultaneous equations. All linear means is no squared, no power. The x, usually we just look at the x. The x is to the power of 1. There is a linear x. That's what we call it. So when there's an x squared, we call it a quadratic x. This equation here, um, where it has x squared and y squared, we usually still call it a quadratic. But um, I guess technically it's, it's sort of linear, I suppose, because we can get square root of it. But basically, um, these are the type of questions we'll solve. They will lead us to um, quadratic equations to help us solve it. Each of these two equations have two answers, and four answers if you count x and y. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. First, I'd like to show you some implications of these questions. Bef previously, we'd nearly always get an answer. In these cases, uh, let me show you three things that can happen. Um, now, this one's a circle. Yeah, I'll put this that in in one of the examples. But uh, for the most part, I'm just looking at this is a this is what a, this would look like a line. And this would look like a quadratic. A quadratic might look something like this. And the line could look something like this. So we will actually get two answers for x. That number is x. That number there is x. We'll also get two answers for y. Two answers for y. So at this point we'll have an x and a y value. Now I'll talk more about that in those terms. When we do quadratic equation, uh, sorry, when we do coordinate geometry. Now, we will do this question again in coordinate geometry, but it can be done without any pictures in algebra. But still, I think it's powerful to see the pictures, especially because I would just like to point out what can happen. Um, let me draw another. Uh, well, here, let me draw a quadratic here. This quadratic has no solution. That doesn't mean. A line cannot go straight through it, though, and have two answers. So bear that in mind. Um, but I was just going to show you the line can also just barely touch it and only give one answer. Sometimes we say there's two answers. They're just both the same. But we'll say it just gives uh, one answer as well. Uh, and then the other possibility, of course, is um, we could have a quadratic and we could have a, a line that goes here. So it couldn't go down here. This quadratic goes on forever and ever. Um, this line actually never touches. Well, I guess I can give an example. I'll give a third example. We won't actually do it. But um, I'll construct a third example that uh, looks like this. And just show you that we will get no answer. Um, and the reason we get no answer is because when we get to a quadratic, when we're trying to solve it, the quadratic will actually have a minus number in the square root. This is the quadratic equation b squared minus 4ac will be less than zero in a question like this. Not this quadratic. This quadratic has answers. But when I put them together, I would get a quadratic. I would have no answers. And um, just uh, one last thing, I guess. It doesn't have to be quadratics and lines. Um, this example here, in fact, is a circle. It's a circle around the center with a radius of square root of 17. Again, we'll learn much more about that in coordinate geometry. And the line um, would look, uh, what would it look like? I, I don't need to get it exactly right, do I? Uh, but I want to. <laughs> it would look something like that, or that's three. That's a slope of one. But yeah, we will get two answers. And actually, even though there's no quadratic in this picture, keep an eye on that, this question will give me a quadratic answer. Well, sorry, in the middle of this question, I will get a quadratic. I don't think I need to rub this fully out. I can leave it on the board here. We'll rub it out when we run out of space on the left. Though I do like to do all my maths this side. It's much, uh, it's much easier to see. All right, so let's have a look at part one. Again, as I always say, please uh, pause the video, try it yourself. This will actually be very similar to the other simultaneous equations we did. Because I always use the substitution method. And it's the substitution method we have to use in this case. x minus y equals 5. y is equal x squared 
minus m 5x plus 3. Okay, so the substitution method says get x equals or get y equals on one of the equations and simply put that into the other equation. Be a little careful. Sometimes there's some things are better than others to do. Sometimes it might be awkward. You, you wouldn't usually want to put an, a squared number into something that's going to get squared. You'll get something to the power of 4. You can solve that. Um, in fact, I should have done one question where we solved to the power of 4. But uh, yeah, you might want to avoid some things. But in this case, nothing will matter too much. We just don't want to get y equals. We already have y equals. So on, on line 2, line 1, let's just take 2 and put it into 1. Let's see what we get. We write 1 out again. We write x minus y. So instead of y, I would put in x squared minus 5x plus 3. All of that equals 5. I should have been a little more careful on my lens there. Now I can clean this up. Let's write this again. x minus, um, minus x squared minus minus 5 is plus 5x. Remember this minus, it's like a minus 1 out here and it's multiplying everybody in the bracket. There could be a little 1 in, after the minus. Um, minus plus 3 is minus 3. All that equals 5. Again, let's uh, clear all this up. We get minus x squared, all the x's together, we get plus 6x and minus 3. Let's, uh, let's take this 5 over now, let's uh, destroy this 5. We'll take 5 from both sides. We will get minus 8 equals 0. Minus 3, take away another 5 is minus 8. And that's it, we could, let's see if we can solve this. Well, the first thing I like to do is I like to get a plus number here. We don't have to. Some of you might be good enough to do this in your head. We can always use the minus b formula. It doesn't really care whether it's a plus or minus there. But I like to multiply everybody by minus 1, just so we get a, a um, positive number there. And now I can see a little easier that this is something I can factorize. Two numbers that multiply to get eight. Well, uh, and oh, and add or take away to get minus six. Well, two and four looks likely, um, but they'd have to be minus two and minus four to get this. So x and x, uh, minus two, minus four. x equals uh, two, x equals four. That's the factor, the root must be this. Okay, so we have some people think we have the answer, do not think we have the answer. We still need to get y. Um, it would probably be easier to use the top one to get y equals, but you know what, we'll use this since it's already here, y equals. Um, y equals, let's say two squared is four, minus 10, let's say four, minus 10 plus three. That in fact equals, let's split these into two, and that equals 7 minus 10 is minus 3. Let's see, y is equal to 16. I get 4 squares minus 5 fours are 20 plus 3. And y is equal, let's see, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. y equals add uh, this. So our answer is. 2 and a minus 3, and our other answer is 4 and a minus 1. When x is 2, y is minus 3. These are joined together. I hope you see that. So the answer could either be x equals, if, if you want to know what x was, there's two answers. It's 2 or it's 4. If you want to know what y is, there's two answers. It's minus 3 or it's minus 1. But if you want to know um, what y is, when x is 2. If somebody tells you x is 2, y can no longer be minus 1. I just wanted to make that clear. I don't always uh, remember to say that. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's how we solve this. Again, if we were doing coordinate geometry, would, we might draw a picture, and that picture would have the point 2 minus 3. Now, you should have done some coordinate geometry already, but we'll do more. Um, 
4 and minus 1 would be the other point. Right, and um, part 2. Let's do it here. This time, my last video, I made the, the writing a bit too small here. So I'll make sure to be a lot bigger on the right side of the screen. It means I'll use more space though. Equals 7. Okay, just like the last time, and again, pause it here, please, if you want to try it. Just like the last time um, here, I want to get y equals on one of them. So I will choose to get y equals on the first equation. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Um, so I will get y equals 3 minus x. That is by taking x from both sides of the first line. I'll stop using this 1 and 2. I'm not sure how useful it is. I think it might confuse people more than it helps. So now that I have this, I simply write this second line out again. x squared plus, but instead of y, I will use this new equation. 3 minus x is equal to y. So instead of writing y, I, don't, I can write this. It's still squared though. And everything is still equal to 17. All right, let's clear this up. We get x squared plus three trees are nine. Three times x plus x times three is six x. And they're both minus, say, right? three times minus x um, is minus three x. Plus minus three x is minus six x. And then we get minus x squared, which becomes a plus x squared. All equals 17. All the x squares together gets 2x squared minus 6x. Let's take 17 from both sides. We get um, minus 8 equals 0. Okay, just like the last time. I can do something simple to this. I can do something simple to this that makes it a little easier. Sorry, here, when I took, when I multiplied everything by a minus. Here, I, I can solve this, but I can make it a little simpler by dividing everything by two. x squared minus three x minus four equals zero. Everything got divided by two. Even the zero got divided by two. It's still zero, of course. So this is something I can now solve. Let me make that a little bigger. Two numbers to multiply to get four. Four and one. Add and take away to get three. Add or take away to get three. Yes, four and one seems to work. Let's see if can we make the signs work. Maybe not, maybe we'll have to give up on it. A minus four and a plus one seems to work. That would make minus four. And minus 4 plus 1 would make minus 3. So our answer is, stand here, answer is x is equal to minus 1, x is equal to 4. That's half our answer. That is all what x is equal. We still need what y is equal. I'll squeeze it in over the side here. We wanted to know what x and y was equal, whereas we found out two different answers for x. So let's say um, x equals minus one. Well, y must equal, let's go to the simplest equation we can. This one here, y equals three minus minus one is plus one. So three plus one is four. When x equals four, what is y? Three minus four y is equal minus one. Right, so that's uh, those two questions. Um, I promised you one more. Well, first I'd just like to say, as you see, we get these quadratics appearing, and we often get two answers. Um, this case, we would have got a, a quadratic, but it would have been a perfect square. And in the, the case I just wrote down, we would have got a quadratic that was unsolvable. When I say perfect square, I mean uh, b squared minus 4ac would have equaled zero. Okay, let me um, construct one that doesn't work, I guess, just to show you what that would look like a little. Uh, 
I can I can make one up here now on the fly. Let's say this is one and three. Quadratic. Now I know the, what that quadratic looks like. It's x minus one, x minus three. That's because the roots are one and three. These must be the factors. This quadratic, if I multiply it out, I get x squared, I get minus four x, I get plus three. And um, maybe if I draw a line there, let's see. We'll make a line here. How about that being minus two? So y is equal, and we'll give it a slope of minus, minus one is fine. And then minus two. So just draw, looking at this, this shouldn't touch each other. So let's see what happens. Um, oh, I, I would need this to be y equals. y equals this to make it a function. You, you often see them looking like this, y equals and y equals. So if I did put this together, I would get y equals y. Or I could just put this y squared into this one. Well, let's do it that way. Instead of this y, I'm writing this line equals minus x minus 2. I guess I'll try and solve this quickly here. x squared, um, add x to both sides, minus 3x. Add 2 to both sides, plus 5 equals 0. I cannot think of a factor for this, so I would have to use the minus b formula. Let's see, minus minus 3 is plus 3, plus or minus the square root, 3 squared minus 3 squared is 9, minus 4, um, minus 4 times 1 times 5 is minus 20. Ah, there we go, already a problem. I don't need to write any of the rest of it really. 9 minus 20 is equal to minus 11. Can't do minus 11. Square root of minus 11, there's a problem there. This one clearly will give us no answers. Even though this quadratic was real, it was solvable, it had two answers. The line is a normal looking line. We will get no answers. If Again, if I got a zero in the middle here, in the quadratic, I mean, we'd only get one answer. All right, I hope you'll be able to try some more questions yourself. Again, go to whatever school book you have, go and look online, try and solve 10, 20, 30 of these until you think these are easy now. Stay working until you get that hard. Have a look in the comments below. I may have put in um, worksheets by now. It's, I haven't right now, but you could be watching a few months in the future where I hope to have done it. Um, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.